and welcome guys to our live show. It's Jeff from Home Renovation DIY. And today we are answering the questions about all of your home renovation plumbing problems. What are the most common problems you're gonna to have to deal with? And what are the solutions? Okay, we're also gonna jump in and teach you a little bit about how to shop. Because when you run into a problem, you need to know what your options are and the right process to get the best advice, okay? Um, believe it or not, Home Depot and the, and the big box stores, they usually have someone on staff in the plumbing department who's kind of competent. And if you have the right information when you go to go shopping, you can get the right product the first time and not have to make a return trip. So let's just jump right into this here today, guys. We got a little bit of information to cover, so I'm going to just go hand the top five first, but then we're going to jump into your questions, okay? If you're a member and you got a question, jump in, ask it, we're going to answer it. And then at some point in the show, we'll switch over and we'll start taking some live calls, see if we can do some troubleshooting because there's a lot of folks renovating or remodeling. And, you know, a lot of the questions we're going to handle today are just general maintenance, right? So if you're deferring the maintenance on your home, that's a bad idea with plumbing because it gets worse. <laughs> so we're going to help you be, uh, be competent and be handy on this show, okay? So that you don't have to spend $100 on truck charge to get a plumber to come out and then pay them to do the job because that gets real expensive real quick, right? All right, uh, it's good to see a whole lot of our, our, our long-term, long-time fans in the show here. We got Mary and Raina here tonight. This is awesome, great to see you guys again. I'm gonna just jump in real quick. One of the things that we run into on a regular basis, okay? Uh, and, and I'd say this because half the homes in North America are built before 1980. And we've got this kind of shut off valve right here, okay? And there we go. And it is one of those that you turn and you turn and you turn and you turn and you turn, okay? The modern valves nowadays are called quarter turn valves. So you take it and you go, and that's it. it. That's on and off. But the old ones, it's two or three spins, okay? These old styles are really difficult because they have two gaskets on the assembly inside. And one is so when it's fully open, you got a gasket compressed to keep the water from coming out. And one, when it's fully closed, the other gasket compresses to keep the water from coming out and shut off the water. Problem is, most of these are left open for their entire lifespan. The ones that are on hot water lines for like your sink or your laundry are the ones that go first. But the start seeing a drip coming right off the nut here, okay? What you do is you go to the store and you buy a brand new one of these valves, the same style. They're about six bucks. You can take a wrench, grab this, you can open that up, and you can change out the handle assembly, put in a new valve with new gaskets, okay? That means you don't have to be that handy. You can also take the valve out and replace the gaskets. That's a little different level of difficulty, but for six bucks, you can fix that problem on all your old valves. You don't have to know how to solder. You don't have to re re replace the whole valve, just the assembly of the body, all right? It's a great cheat, and it should help a lot of you guys out so that you don't have water pooling around the floor because a lot of the water supply lines are coming through the floor. And if it starts to drip, it's not just going on the floor. It's getting underneath a little flange cover and into the hole and it starts to create damage in your floor and your ceilings. So that's there to help somebody. <laughs> Hopefully that did. Another real common question is dripping faucets. Now, I've got a faucet here today. Yeah, I do over here. All right. I went to the store last night, guys, and I dropped 700 bucks on different plumbing stuff so that we could have a chat. Here's the single handle faucet, okay? On, off, hot, cold, it's really simple. Now, what most people don't know is on the back of these faucets, there's a little place in here where you can put an Allen key and you release that set screw and the handle pops off, okay? And what you do if you have a leaking faucet is you have to understand that somewhere along the way, debris in the water line got trapped in the cartridge. Now, I bought a cartridge here. Let me just pull it out. And what you're gonna find is this. You take off an O-ring and you can pull out the cartridge, okay? Now, every one of these cartridges comes with a code. I'm not gonna get that on camera. Maybe, right there, stamped on the side. You can actually put that in as a Google search, just that code, boom, it'll tell you exactly what faucet what part, and then you can call up your local supplier, your Home Depot or your Lowe's or your, your Ace or your home hardware and say, do you carry this product? Okay, and then you can replace the cartridge because what happens is the holes underneath, a little debris, a solder ball or something else gets in the line and it causes damage to the, these gaskets right here. 
and then they start to leak and they won't ever turn to the full off position. So if you've got a dripping faucet and it's driving you nuts <laughs> in your bathroom faucet or your kitchen faucet, that is the solution, okay? All decent plumbing products that are out there, for the most part, guys, this is a 99% solution. You take the handle off, you take off the O-ring, make sure you turn off the water first because that stuff's all under pressure and it'll blow up like Mount Vesuvius in your face. We don't want that, all right? And then you can get the part, do your research, and get your information so you can buy a new replacement part. You don't have to buy the whole faucet. All right? That ought to help somebody out. Now, oh, the clogged or the slow drain. Yeah. Um, and by the way, that faucet issue, it holds true for showers as well. Okay? Every shower, you can, you can turn off the water to the house. You can take the main face plate off. You can have access to that. Um, I'm going to have something here for that. Do I have it nice and handy? Maybe it's over here still. Okay. I got to get to that in just a second. The point is this. Oh, here it is. Ah, I wanted to show this to you guys. Here's your shower assembly, right? This is a mowing. Remember we talked about in that video that came out on Saturday, this is a little connector plate here. This is designed to tell you where your wall assembly is, right? How thick where your tile has to finish. Okay, so you can set it in the wall. Well, check this out. Here's a mowing. Really simple assembly, okay? All right, and you slide the chrome off. And you can do this after the, the shower's finished, 20 years later. The same valve body is still being made by mowing. You can actually buy a new trim kit, which means you can buy the black or the chrome or the Venetian or whatever, the gold, and you can take all the chrome off and change all your colors. What you can also do is you take this little pin right here at the top, okay? It's a U-shaped clamp and it pops right out. And there's that, yep. Now, you grab onto this bad boy, which is gonna be difficult because it's always a little greasy out of the factory. Boy, here we go. Now, let's see if we can get this to play ball for me or not. Yeah. Oh. I was at the job site today, and I was like, Jeff, don't forget to bring a wrench home. Jeff, don't forget to bring a wrench home. And Jeff forgot to bring a wrench home. Okay, we're getting there. It slides right out, okay? Now, on this valve assembly, it will have the brand. It'll have a code. You just got to look for it. And then once you've got that information, you can go and get a valve replacement. You grab your valve replacement. You come back. You stick it in the same location, and then you slide that ring right back in, okay? Brand new shower, okay? That'll save somebody's bacon, because let's face it, uh, if you've done soldering in your house and the solder ball finds its way into the valve, it stops working, it leaks, it drips forever, okay? Nothing worse than trying to go to the bed and sleep with a dripping faucet. Now, let's get rid of that one, because that question is now solved. Uh, we have the clogged or the slow drains. Love these, okay? These are great. I get these questions all the time. My drain is slow, and it usually, um, we'll talk, we'll tackle two different issues. One, let's talk about sinks, okay? And here's the issue. This is why I had to buy this, because I'm at an Airbnb, and I didn't want to tear somebody's bathroom apart and be able to demonstrate this. <laughs> Here we go. Let me just pull out a typical cheap faucet for you. It's all plastic parts. God help us. Can we stop using plastic? But anyway, this is what they do. What we get is we get, oh my goodness, all these new parts. We get a rod, okay? It comes from above the counter where the faucet is. And this is what you pull or pull, push down and it makes everything else function, okay? Here we are. Anyway, the point is, I've never worked with this assembly, so it seems a little bit foreign to me. All right. Here, I'll just do it this way. Yeah. So here's your sink, and you've got your plunger in here, okay? And what these do is there's a rod, and it lifts it or closes it when you when you lift the stick, okay? And because that that because this is in here, it's catching hair. You can't stop that. All of these little nicks and dads and corners and 
and the rod, they're catching hair, okay? So the solution to this, uh, you've got to change this, all right? Now here's what you're going to want to change it to. Something metal, preferably. All right, now here we go. Now here's a different kind of pop-up. That's closed. That's open. It's called a pop-up drain. There's no mechanics inside that pipe, okay? There's nothing there, all right? Really, really, really simple. Now, the other thing you need to know is that all bathroom sinks have a collar, okay, a slip that goes on here, and they're all inch and a quarter, all right? So when you go shopping, don't get the inch and a half. Inch and a half is for kitchen sinks, inch and a quarter is for bathroom sinks, okay? And don't just reach in the bin and grab it like I do all the time. Reach in the bin, confirm it's the right size, guys, okay? The holes are obviously different. Make sure you grab one of each so that you can say, okay, I'm gonna get the smaller hole. Those are the only two options. That'll save your bacon. If you switch to this, and let's face it, how often do we use a sink closed and actually fill it with water to do something? Like, men used to shave like that 100 years ago, but nowadays, not happening. So get rid of all that little stick and fussing around. I honestly think that the companies still use that stick because they want to drive you nuts. And they know that when you go crazy, you're going to call a plumber and he's going to go in and he's going to change your faucet for you. <sighs> what a waste of time and money. Anyway, let's move on to running toilets. All right, here we go. And then we're going to get into some questions. This is uh, quirky. I never use them. But this is the latest and greatest being heralded as the one-stop solution for everything at Home Depot relating to toilets. There we go. We'll bust this out of the package. Could have done that before we started the show, but hey. And voila. Now, I can't return that one, but this is going to be good for us. Okay. In the package, it shows that this little device here replaces all the interior guts of your toilet. So, generally what we have is we have a flotation device, okay? And this float gets to a point it shuts off your water supply, right? There's always a drain in there as well. And if the water gets up and gets over that drain without this being engaged, it's not telling the water to stop. So it just keeps running and running and running. That's a waste of time and money, okay? So you got a gasket for your two-piece toilet that you can get a good seal. You get all your nuts and bolts in here. And then you got this, the flapper. Now, the flapper goes on the handle, okay? And then when you press the handle, it lifts the flap, and then it should just sit right back down perfect. Over time, these degrade, the connections get worse, okay? I've also had situations where toilets, the arm is making contact with this device, the flotation device. And so it doesn't ever really let the, the arm will actually sit right here, and the flotation device never gets high enough to turn off the water. That's actually happening at the toilet I was working at today. So I wanted to get this. It was like, well, that's just stupid. So I had to adjust the height of this thing. Okay, it's a simple adjustment. And always want your water to stop about a quarter inch below the top of your overfill spot. If it's too close, you run the risk of a little degradation causing that issue. All right, so take care of your mess. Take care of your business. That's good for now. Let's run into things you need to know when you're shopping. Okay. Hmm. There is more than one size of everything. That's the first thing. Just like with this. Okay. Um, let's say you wanted to go and, and change something out in your tub. Okay. So you've got a tub and you have a little rubber stopper and the rubber stopper just ain't cutting it for you. And you're always losing it. <laughs> you can buy one of these. Okay. Because the tubs have a flange. All right. Here we go. All right. And in the bottom of that flange, there's an X. And there's a little hole. And it's a threaded hole. And so generally speaking, these things, oh, how come that doesn't work? Because there's two sizes. All right. And it's in millimeters. No one really knows what you got. So when you go to the store, buy both sizes if you're going to replace it. All right. And you can. You can take your tub out and change it to a new one. This is the different size. Boom, boom, boom. You screw that in. Now you've got a compression 
fitting that opens and closes your tub water. And if you have a problem with drain in your, in your tub, you can simply unscrew it, remove it, and have access to clean the hair up. All right? So these things exist. There are two sizes for just about everything. When it comes to these kinds of things, you have to bring this with you or a picture of it at least. Confirm sizes, dimensions. Make sure that the manufacturer hasn't changed the model design of the housing itself, okay? Turn the water to the house off, remove your cartridges, and then go to the store. And generally speaking, if it's a Moen, for instance, they'll have the cartridges available for free. Lifetime warranty with that company means it, but they're also in Home Depot in Canada, we have this company called Profix selling Moen replacement parts. So if you don't know that you can get it for free, then you're going to end up buying it. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Thanks for the option. Things that you should know when you're shopping. Shut up, valves. There's a new product out here. It's called Flood Protect. I'll get that on the screen. Boom. This has been around for years, but generally speaking, people don't know about it, don't talk about it. If you have a kitchen and you want to go all hardwood, you have a potential water disaster, right? So you buy the Flood Protect water supply for both of your sinks and for your dishwasher. And basically what this is, this unit here senses when the water is running too fast and it shuts it off. So if your dishwasher has a pump and the pump breaks, all of a sudden the water just keeps on going and it'll, it'll shut it off and save your house. Okay, this is really great to know. Um, one other thing that's really great to know, shower arms. These are awesome. Teflon tape, guys, is a miracle worker. You all need to learn how to work with it, okay? Teflon tape for anything that's going into a wall. Go three, four, five times, okay? That's the minimum. Sometimes I go seven, especially if it's old. And now I have the part. Here it is. <laughs> Here's what goes inside your wall. It's called a angle and it threads in and if you put five threads and no, no, did you notice that here i'll go closer to the mic you go backwards until it makes that click sound oops right there that's when you know you've found the thread if you don't go backwards until it go, clicks into place you might be cross threading and if you cross thread your pipe in you're not going to get a water seal and it's going to leak inside your wall. All right, here you go. Gentle pressure, okay? If you have to use a wrench to pull it into position, you're too tight, take it out, put another couple, take the Teflon off, and if you go five, then go to seven, and then gently bring it into position earlier in the rotation, okay? That's all you got to do. Works like a charm. Now, um, there's a whole bunch of other stuff we can talk about. We can talk about if you're tiling over tile on your floor and it's concrete, that's fine. Buy one of these, okay? This is a great little tool. Bam, floor drain cover. Cut your hole. The inside of this cover is a lot smaller than the outside, okay? And so it's a four inch cover, a three inch diameter hole. So you leave a three inch diameter hole and you just snap that in place and then all of a sudden your drain is working and it works amazing, okay? Um, every kind of gasket you could ever want is at that store. There's flat washers, there's O-rings, there's hat gaskets, I call them. They call them a beveled washer. That's great. And if you're in an old house and you got a floor drain, get one of these. This is called a backflow preventer. Yeah. Okay. It's a drain check, basically. And what it is, you put it in the drain and there's screws on the top and you take your drill and you tighten up the, 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 the screws and it compresses on that gasket and makes it go fat and it seals it off. Now, let me just, I'll put this in the package afterwards. On the top here, there's this spring-loaded washer here. Okay, see that? This is in the uh, closed position. Okay, make sure that your your floor. This is below your floor, and then you you do your four screws. Fattens up the gasket, and what happens is it seals itself off. All right. So uh, you get a little bit too much rain, and the city streets back up. If you have this installed and it's not too much pressure, it has resistance. Okay, and it can save you from a flood. And then if you do get water in your house for some other reason, a little bit of water will open this up and the water will drain down the drain. Piece of cake. Um, could be worth a lot of money to a lot of people. So worth knowing. Oh, one more thing. <laughs> and then we're going to get into questions. Plastic, ABS, pipes. When we stick them together, 
okay? You can't just put the threads to the threads. You got to use what? Teflon. And here's why. Plastic threads do not watertight. Now, there's two different kinds of water. Water under pressure, that's water supply, and then water under gravity, which is the drains. But even water under a drain scenario is enough there to leak if you don't use Teflon tape. And if you think you're solving a problem by being a man and really reefing on it, what you're doing is you're taking a round pipe and you're forcing it to go oblong, like a, like a, oh, like a, uh, yeah, you're flattening it out instead of staying round, okay? And what'll happen is that flattening out opens up the grain of, of the grooves and water gets through even faster. Or it'll snap and shear off that collar and then you're right back to going to the store again. So, uh, Teflon tape, uh, 50 cents. And it'll last you 100 plumbing jobs, okay? Trip to the store, an hour, plus another 12 bucks for one of these bad boys. So you do the math. Teflon's your friend. The more you use, the less <clears throat> you got to use, right? Beautiful. Okay. Uh, Matt's helping me out tonight. He's in the uh, back in Ottawa at his house. So he's going to run the comment section. Wow. I made a hell of a mess on my table here. <laughs> That's all right. Cheers, to everybody. Uh, Matt, let's just jump into some questions here, bud. Um, we will see what the folks will need to know. I've got other toys and tricks and stuff here so that we can hopefully have some more visual aids for you. And uh, we'll see what we can come up with. All right. Courtney Peters, uh, I dropped the screw down my kitchen sink. Wow. Opposite side of the garbage disposal. Do I need to get it out? My current strategy is pretend it didn't happen. <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, you might be surprised. If it's the opposite side of the garbage disposal and you don't want it going in the garbage disposal, um, I don't know what your sink is like, but if it has a P-trap like this configuration, then you can just loosen up the collar, right? And pull this out and then pour it into a pail and see if the screw is sitting there. A lot of times things like rings and screws are actually too heavy to, to, to go down the drain. And so you might be just all right. Uh, if it's not there, then run lots of water, okay, before you turn the garbage disposal on so you don't get that sucker caught up in the blade. All right, cause you damage. Cheers. Uh, um, here's a question. Is there a difference between the white and the black tapes? Okay, yeah. Um, we have a bunch of different tapes. We have white. We have yellow. I think we have orange. Um, black is usually electrical. White is for Teflon for doing plastic pipes. And then I think the... Um, the yellow is for you doing gas supply, okay? So you can buy gas rated Teflon, that's fine. Just use less of it, it's a lot thicker, all right? So that'll work for you too. All right, cheers. Don't use electrical tape for plumbing though. <laughs> it's a totally different beast altogether. Oh my goodness. Uh, all right. Mm. Cast iron plumbing, let's get into it. This is good. Um, starting to leak from under the shower to the ground below. Do you have to pull it all out or just the rusted spot? And what material would you suggest? First of all, cast iron plumbing. Um, we stopped using it in North America with the introduction of the new building code, so 1974. And it only lasts 100 years, and it barely lasts 100 years. The last 20 or 30 are usually just hanging on by the, by, by the fingertips. So if you still have some, you're already, what, 50, five years? 50 years solid for sure, get rid of it. It's not doing you any benefits. It corrodes, it swells. When it corrodes, it grabs hair. It doesn't drain as well. Debris can get caught. You're forever using a plunger. We're trying to blow the lines out. Uh, the sooner you can get rid of your cast, the better off you're gonna be in your house. Um, and you can have an actual uh, massive failure where it can cause massive damage. So don't let that happen, okay? You know you've got old plumbing. Make plans to get it replaced. All right, let's get to another question here. Uh, back to basics. Would a full home water filter system help prevent new issues after fixing the current ones? Water home filter system. Well, I don't, it depends on your issues. Like, guys, remember when we did the farmhouse? We got a whole home filter system put in. And we were using peroxide and a few different filter systems. And it was amazing water quality, right? What it does prevent is it prevents the iron buildup in your toilets. It prevents the um, uh, early onset of 
ugly on all of your kitchen faucets and, and bathroom faucets, and it stops the corrosion happening inside your supply lines. So I'm a big fan. Um, if you have custom showers that are tiled and you don't have an in-home water filtration system and you're on well water, you're in trouble. Um, but the reality is with filtration systems, it all depends. Are you, are you trying to protect the system of the house or are you trying to protect the quality of water going that you're drinking? Those are two different questions. Obviously, for the best results, you need to have one of the technicians come out and they can test your water where you live and they can tell you what issues you've got to deal with and design your system just for your location. There's no one size fits all there. So you can save a lot of money by, by zeroing in on your problems, okay? So don't be had. You don't have to spend 10 or 12,000 bucks. A lot of times you can get just two or $3,000 of equipment and be just fine. So uh, be real careful how fast you wanna say yes to that big purchase. All right. Oh my goodness. Anna wants to know, my shower was leaking. My husband changed the knob but it still has a slow drip. How do, do, do I need to change the spout as well? Whew, all right. Um, a slow drip from a shower that has a new valve cartridge. Hmm. It could be the valve body was damaged during installation. I know it's brass, it seems really solid, but sometimes, let me show you this. I mean, it's still brass, right? So you see this? This is the most common thing on a shower, these threads. And because it's a thread, it means you have to create this compression, okay, with, with, with the, um, the, the male half-inch thread that goes over it. And a lot of plumbers will use just a little bit of Teflon. I like to use the Teflon and the plumber's paste. If you don't have some of this, here we go. I'm trying to make the camera pick that up. There we go. Odie's plumber's paste. Um, it's called the Great White Pipe Joint Compound. You use them in conjunction, okay? It gets a better seal. You don't have to twist as hard. And whenever you're twisting really hard, it means you got a wrench on one side and a wrench on the other. And you can create a little bit of a problem in here where you can mess up the valve body. So it's possible you need to replace it. That's, that would be a shame. Or it's possible that whatever debris got caught in there got caught between the valve body and the cartridge, okay? And just the act of opening up and putting the new one in, there could be a scratch there now. So yeah, everything can fail. <laughs> this is why we tell you when you're changing your plumbing out, all right, guys, listen to this, put it in the wall, connect everything. And before you turn the water on, remove the cartridge and flush your lines. That eliminates the risk of those kinds of damages from happening in the first place because 99% of them are during install. Once you're up and running, you're fine. And if you're doing plumbing and soldering work on your house and you've got shower cartridges, be aware that you can set a, a, a solder ball loose in your system, okay? And maybe it's not a terrible idea to take the two minutes to pull the cartridges out and flush your lines and put it all back together again. It only takes two minutes to do. It can save you a whole lot of aggravation, but outside of that shell, the valve body, the water is pressurized. If it's dripping constantly, it's at the valve body. There are no other components in the shower that are gonna be complicating your situation. And there's a difference between constant dripping and a shower that drains and drips a couple of minutes after the shower's over. There's always a, a pressure system there and air coming in and then it will siphon out. Okay, so that's different than dripping. Let's be clear about that. All right, next question. Ken Skywalker, love the channel. Question on one toilet. I need to hold down the flush for it to fill drain properly. Is this a flapper issue or something else? Okay, um, you got to hold down the flush for it to fill drain properly. Okay. Ken, what I'm talking about here is we're not talking about the back of the toilet. We're talking about the bowl. All right, so... What you're saying is, is if you just press it, it opens and then it closes before all the water in the tank goes in and that's not enough water to get the job done. Could be a couple of things. One, 90% um, of the toilets sold in America are garbage. <laughs> so here's the truth, okay? Um, number two, a round toilet, if it's poorly made, will perform better than an oval shaped toilet. Okay, the elongated toilet, it doesn't, it doesn't siphon as well. 
And if you're buying cheap toilets, then you've got to get around one, okay? So anything under, um, let's say, wow. I'm going to be try to be kind here. Um, huh, yeah, a good toilet runs about 400 bucks. All right. And if you don't have an account at a commercial plumbing supplier, you can't get the, the, the home brand toilet for 150. Those are great too. But pretty much everything you sold at the box store, it's just, it's just garbage. And it's there to make you come back and buy another toilet after you get frustrated down the road. That's pretty much all I have to say about it. We're actually going to do a live show. We're going to do the um, what I call the Game of Thrones, and we're going to bring a bunch of toilets in, and I'm going to install them all and film how they all function and work, okay? And then we're going to do the live show and talk about it and what the real solution is out there to buying a toilet because end of the day, they all make lots of claims, and most of them don't work. That's it, right? It's just the way she goes. So... Yeah, we have to address that as a whole nother subject matter. All right, next question. Derek, my tap in the kitchen constantly turns to the left. What do I need to do to keep it from moving? Well, let's see. What do I got here? Uh, I don't have a kitchen faucet. All right, David. Um, there's different quality faucets out there. And underneath your sink, if you have a, uh, a brass metal plate with three or maybe even two screws, okay, what you want to do is... Um, get your screwdriver with a nice long extension bit that I like and torque those screws a little bit, okay? Because over time, everything that's installed with moves over time. There's vibrations and it causes things to unscrew and then your assembly isn't tight. So most kitchen, kitchen faucets nowadays have a plate with metal screws that you can actually create extra torque, extra resistance to keep things from sliding around. So just try that out. Um, and if you can't seem to figure that out, get under there, take a picture of your assembly, and then go to the Home Depot and say, this is what I'm dealing with. What do you have that solves that problem? You might have a really cheap faucet and you might need to upgrade. You might only have plastic parts. And that's just the sad reality, all right? Okay, next question. Oh, Rana, is the Teflon tape an alternative to the liquid brush on glue I've seen you use in different plumbing videos? Not an alternative, it's, well, Okay, Raina, if you've seen me do this, um, here, I've used this before. This is one of the things I like to do when I'm renovating. If I've got a shutoff valve, right? Remember that shutoff valve I was showing you? Here's the water supply side. So I'll turn the water off, okay? And if everything goes well, it's not dripping. That's great. But what happens in, an, in a renovation usually is um, this is still in the room. You're, you're doing tile or changing baseboards or toilet, or somebody steps on it, okay? Just a touch, just enough to loosen it up so it starts to bubble up. It's the end of the day. We're all finished. We're packing up. We're leaving. Okay, that's Friday afternoon. On Monday, you come back to work, and now you've got five, ten gallons of water in that bathroom. So what I suggest everybody do is go out and buy yourself a half-inch cap. This is a brass fitting. It's in the plumbing department, okay? And then you use the paste, and you simply put it on there, finger tight, Okay, take a pair of pliers and a quarter turn, and that's it. And then even if this is fully open, that water is not going to come out. It avoids accidents, okay? So you don't have to, like, take all your shutoff valves off and cap all your lines when you're doing a remodel. You can do something like that, extra ounce of prevention. That's where I use that, Rena. But whenever I'm dealing with anything that's plastic, you've got to use Teflon, okay? It's a lubricant and a sealer, okay? So brass on brass, which is what that is, you're fine with just the... Um, the, the, the pipe dope, but if you're using anything uh, CPVC or, or PVC or ABS, then use the Teflon in addition. Now, the only time I change that rule is when I'm going with this brass to brass here, okay? This I'll use both because this situation, your shower arm, you don't want it sticking up in the air. <laughs> so you want to be able to have enough compression that when you come down on your last swing, it's feeling snug, right? And if it's not, you're stuck there going, ripping her in. But if you ripped it in and you're not, you're still sideways, well, then that's going to look stupid, right? So then they take it off. Use the Teflon tape to create a thicker gasket, if you will. Okay, this is how you can customize a gasket to make sure that you finish in that location. Hopefully that answers the question. Raina has been a member for a long time, 
And so I'll take my time answering her questions all day long. You understand? 1978 home with copper plumbing. Mike wants to know, when should I start thinking about converting to PEX? 50 year gives me until 2028. Do I just wait for that first leak? <laughs> you could, but it all depends on your configuration of your home and how much damage that might have, right? So yeah, man, oh man. Um, listen, I know we, we use a 50 year for copper. The truth is it can go hundred. So don't be in a big hurry to spend that money. Do an inspection, okay? See what your copper situation looks like um, because you don't have to be in a hurry to spend that money. If you have easy access, well, then it's not a big bill. And if you're handy and you want to go and buy yourself some tools, you can solve all that problem yourself in a weekend. Then I'd suggest getting it done. It does increase the value of your home having modern plumbing. So, you know, that's, that's, that's a thing. So uh, it, it, it's really up to you about how long you want to roll those dice. But you are insured if a problem happens. So if you want to play the long game and maybe get another 20, 30 years out of it and leave it up to the insurance to have your back if something bad happens, then you don't have to spend the money right now. And right now, uh, spending money is a, a significant question for a lot of folks. So if you can defer it, then maybe deferring maintenance on your home isn't a bad idea during this current economic situation. All right. Let's get to another question here. Jason Prera. Cheers, buddy. He's another member. How do I attach a copper pipe to a 90 degree threaded drop elbow so I can attach the tub faucet? Let me see that one more time. How do I attach a copper pipe to a 90 degree threaded drop elbow, which is what that is, so I can attach the tub faucet? Huh. That's an interesting concept. Um, again, it's the same thing. Let's just pretend that's a copper pipe, right? You, tub faucet, how do I attach copper pipe? Here's the thing, your, your tub faucet, okay, I get you now, Jason. Your tub faucet has a couple different options, okay? Um, are you using PEX to your, to your tub spout? Maybe not a great idea, unless you've got the expansion PEX. If you're using copper to your, your, your tub, some of these tub faucets have got that half inch NPT tub and you, you turn your tub, your, your spout on. Okay. So you want to bring a stub out. So you want to use something like this so that you can then put in a one inch stub and you can put the half inch on both sides. I get that. The best option for you in almost every case is to have copper elbow and straight copper because you can always get a tub spout to slide over copper and then attach it. It is really, really, really difficult to manage the installation of this behind a shower wall because these NPT fittings only come in half inch increments. So you got to be bang on with the thickness of your full assembly before you even get started with your assembly. Or you mount this with longer screws and you leave room so that when you go to do your threading, if it doesn't quite make enough connection for you, it feels too loose and you're worried about it, you can reach in with your drill bit and you can back off your screws and pull this away from the framing. And then you can tighten this up again, all right? So you can do a little bit of finagling there. And that's how I would do it. I usually like to use about a two inch screw when I'm doing that scenario, because some plumbing out there, you've got to have a threaded pipe going into the faucet. I get it, it's maddening. So that's how you make that adjustment, okay? That way you can use the right amount of Teflon and paste and get that perfect last quarter turn to get your tub spout facing down knowing that you're nice and secure and behind the wall. Cheers, buddy. Dragon Hero 14, remember for six months? Well, cheers there, my friend. I uh, have a shower that after running for five to 10 minutes, backs up and starts holding water. Yeah, it's hair. <laughs> that's, that's, there's two options. Let's just be honest. There's two options. One is hair, right? Um, because you've got this, that little X in there. And if anybody's using that shower and it starts to fill up with hair, that's the problem. Okay, so take this out and clean out the hair. The other option, if it's the only fixture in the house that has that problem, the only other thing it can be is that you've got something stuck in your drain. Okay, that's the only other thing it can be. If it's a venting issue, you're going to have the same kind of thing happening in other sinks and other, other showers. 
okay? So it's usually not a venting issue. If it's just isolated to one shower, it's usually just hair. So look around the room, and if someone in that room has got long hair, just realize that you're in charge of the maintenance, so you gotta manage pulling that hair clog out every once in a while. Or instead of pulling it out, you can take a knife, and you can go in and you can slice all the hair off of those four sticks in there, okay? And then wash it all loose. That's another option. But uh, it's best to manage that on a monthly basis, maybe, right? Um, <laughs> R and B, B, and we have the same thing. As soon as we got in here, I took my first shower. I was about three inches deep by the time I was done. And it was just like, oh, what a pain. So, you know, I took care of business because uh, I knew what the problem was. And that was it. And problem solved. All right. Cheers to you, my friend. Uh, okay, 42 Ren, I guess, we're going to go with. All right. <laughs> Excuse me if I get it messed up. The connection between the garbage disposal output and the drain keeps coming apart. I replaced the gasket, but it still separates with time and use. Should I apply solvent to the glue? Uh, okay. Uh, I do not have the fix here, but here's what I'm going to say. If you are using a threaded connection with something that vibrates, all right, then what you want to use is metal to metal connections, especially it's like, um, it's a blue paste and it, and, and it's basically like a weld. Uh, I wish I could Google that. My brain is leaving me a little bit stupid today. It's a thread sealant. Okay. You're going to find it in the plumbing department. And if you don't find it there, you'll find it in hardware where the screws are. Okay. You can use it on anything that's threaded that you don't want to unthread with vibration. It's called a thread sealant paste, and you put that on there. It's like a thread locking, okay? Uh, I'm not sure what the brand is that you're going to be able to get, but if you go to the store and you say, listen, I need some thread locking sealant, they'll know what you're talking about. Tell them it's blue. They'll be like, aha, uh -huh. because a lot of plumbing products nowadays actually come with that on the set screws, okay? It, it's pre-applied to the manufacturer, and all you got to do is tighten it in, and it just creates that extra bit of compression so that it doesn't vibrate off. And that'll save your bacon. And then you won't have to be on your back underneath the sink once a month. <laughs> My goodness. All right. Oh, um, what's the main differences between a Moen shower fixture and a brand that is three times more expensive? Well, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Let's just deal with it. A basic Moen shower fixture is just that. It's on, off, hot, and cold. Okay. There's no pressure balancing. There's no thermostatic valve, so you can't preset temperatures and put, can't go too hot, too cold. There's a lot of different options out there for having a shower valve. You can do combinations of both. You can have valves that have three and four outputs. So you can go to the rain shower, a wand, jets, um, combinations of all of them around the dial, positive stops, or just always sloppy and all, something's always running. The more money you spend, the more quality you get, generally speaking, as a rule. Um, Moen is just a good lifetime warranty, basic, simple product that's always going to work. And uh, it's not such a terrible thing. All right. Here we go. We'll do another question. Then we're going to go to some phones here. Uh, Matt, I'll have you put up the phone number before I get to this question here. And then I'm going to let you guys know that um, we got a really interesting schedule coming up. Okay, for the live show for next week, it is uh, open line, open topic. I'm traveling back to Florida again. So we're going to be probably at a hotel room. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll be able to get somewhere with enough internet service that we can have a live show. We're going to do our best, okay? So bear with us and try that one out next week. And then the week after that, I'm in Texas at Vid Summit, so we won't be doing a live show on the 3rd. But to follow up with this, we are going to be joining Roger Wakefield at his show in Texas on the 7th, Saturday at like 11 Central Time, Okay. And then on the 7th of October, we're going to be somewhat back to normal. We have a surprise. I can't leak it yet. But we're going to be doing a special show um, for tradesmen and anybody who's getting into the, uh, the side gig economy, using their hands to make some money. So we're going to do that. And then uh, uh, within a couple weeks after that, I'm going to be doing my first Work With Me Live as a follow-up. Anybody who saw us do the Work With Me Live, you saw... We did a paint thing. We bought new cameras, new gear. We got a better setup. We're going to have multiple cameras going this time. And Matt's going to be running it from Ottawa, which is going to be phenomenal. That way, I don't have to be you know, uh, messing around so much. And, and we're going we're gonna to have a great show. We're going to be doing some tile work. 
Okay, this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to that. And it's going to be a long one. We're probably going to be working for about three or four hours. I got to tile a room and uh, we're going to just deal with all that. So if you're looking for something like that to hang out with, we're going to do it on a Tuesday. We're going to start around four. We're going to run right through to about eight o'clock at night. All right. Love to hear your comments on that concept. If you're interested, let me just make sure that, yeah, I got the SIM card plugged into the phone here. There we go. And I got enough juice to get through the rest of the show. Fantastic. Well, there we go. The phone number's on the screen. If you got a question, give me a call. Whew. Man, there's a lot going on in our wild world. I would tell you. You know, I had people ask me, Jeff, can you tile in a trailer? It's only two by six. I'm like, yeah, you can. And I'm going to show you how. <laughs> All righty. Hello, it's Jeff here. Who am I speaking to? Hey, Jeff, it's Juan. Hey, Juan, You're how are you? <laughs> Fantastic. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually in Port, I'm in Port St. Lucie anyway. Oh, uh, nice. I have a question. Shoot, man. Uh, my HVAC closet, I needed to add a an outlet. Okay. And I was going to feed that new outlet to a switch that's literally in the same. It's, you, if you drill right, right through it, there's the bedroom. So my question is, how do you put a grommet to prevent friction of that wire when, when I, after you drill through that stud to be a, that metal stud. Oh, it's a uh, metal stud. Around the wire. Mm. Yeah, yeah. My, my house, uh, the second level is aluminum stud. Okay, so you you so won't have to, you won't have uh, access to uh, run a grommet. Right, because it's literally inside of the wall, and and yeah, so it's hard to put a grommet. Well, you, you're probably going to have to open your drywall a little bit. Because right now it's there. I mean, nothing yeah. moves. No, well, but it does vibrate. And that's yeah. that's really the risk, right? It's it's the overtime. And it might take 10 or 15 years. You might sell the house. Well, my, but what about <laughs> if, if I'm unable to successfully figure out a way, what if I put a GFCI in that HVAC outlet? In, in, you know, the GFCI outlet. Yeah, the problem with that is, is you're, you're going to make the plug safe, but you're not going to make the, the constant power in the wiring safe. And so you could start a fire oh. inside the wall. And so at the end of the day, um, if you're doing your own electrical in, in Florida, you still need to get a permit anyway, wink, wink. So um, there are no way to work around that. You're going to have to open up the wall enough to get access and put in the grommet, my friend. Well, I, I can't achieve it with the question. <laughs> <laughs> An electrician actually, an electrician is the one who actually installed the outlet, but you never put a grommet in there. And I'm oh. imagining because there's no easy way to do it. Yeah. Well, you know what? There's a, there's no shortage of guys who have cheated the system. Did he at least wrap the wire with a, like five or six layers of electrical tape to insulate it and protect it from no, the sharp edge? Man, no. No. Yeah. No. Okay. Can you can you do you have any access to it at all? Well, I guess if I remove the outlet. I'll have access to the hole, but okay. I don't know how, how successful I'll be in. Yeah. What if I put like a, a rubber tubing around the wire? You know, like you go to Home Depot and you Yeah, buy if you can get tube. some rubber tubing on it, that'd be great. Or even expansion foam. Anything so that the wire isn't oh, wow. moving, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, hands up on the foam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That might be a great fix, and then it'll be less damage. All right? But would it be in code, do you think? Well, it's a hell of code at this point. You're, 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 code gave you an electrician, and now you got to fix a problem. So now you got to be creative. Yeah. So the the, the, the goal yeah. is to keep the wire from vibrating. Right? You don't want right. to move yeah. it around. I mean, so far it hasn't vibrated, but like you said, it could take a few years. And well, you know, and somebody could do pull out the plug and do some maintenance or switch that up and then put it back in, and then the wire shifts position, and then God only knows what's going to happen. So, well, yeah. I'm going to try to do what you said. Okay. Or do that rubber tubing. All right. Well, there All you right, go. <laughs> okay. Cheers, buddy. All right. Uh, I almost forgot, guys. If you're going to call in, make sure that you turn off the devices in your room because there is a time lag and we will get up in a loop. Um, one didn't do that, but it happened last time. Yeah. You know what? Really, guys, don't ask me for creative electrical solutions. I'm not, I, I probably can't be giving that kind of advice. <laughs> uh, hello, Jeff here. Who am I speaking with? Hey Jeff, it's Austin in Florida. How you doing? Sir? I'm I'm good, Austin. What can we do to help you out, buddy? Hey, just uh, I don't have a question, but more of a uh, future video. Uh, being in Florida, 
the uh, impact windows are very expensive. So maybe in one of your future videos, if you could show uh, installing one into uh, cinder block construction down here is very common. Yeah, no kidding. Okay, well, that's something to consider. Cause, yeah, uh, thank you. No, I get it because, like, yeah, it's 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 probably a better option than 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 shutters are always hanging plywood. Eh? <laughs> yeah, and your videos are great, but you're you know you're mainly in the northern area of the world, and, and down here it's it's a little different with the concrete block. No, no, for sure it is. You know, and and that's kind of what I did. The reason I bought the trail in the first place was to try new construction technology, and so I have more experience. Okay. So it makes me more valuable to all of you guys. So it is in one of my goals is to get a slab on grade. And, and, and concrete blocks so that we can we can have some fun and renovate one of those as well. Okay, and just one more thing before I let you go. Sure. A lot of these companies, they, they make you sign up and then they come out to your house and then they kind of like, well, this is the price. So maybe if you could also talk about like where to get the windows, like do Lowe's, Home Depot, I don't even know if they sell those kind of windows. Yeah, that's a good question. I'm gonna have to check it out. Here, I'm writing that down, All right. impact windows. Thanks, my hey, friend. And, uh, hey, sir, keep doing what you're doing. Thanks a lot. Your <laughs> okay, man. Out. Cheers, buddy. All right. There you go. Bye-bye. Yeah, really. Okay. Well, listen, I mean, I don't mind talking about all kinds of weird stuff, but I'd love to be able to stay on topic if we can, guys. All right? Uh, this is a show about plumbing, after all. And I know I'm kind of handy, and we could probably solve a few other questions out there, but uh, we got about 10 minutes left. So if you got a question about plumbing, great. If you don't, you can still call. You know, we're just here to help. Love doing it. Uh, Derek has got a question here. One of my toilets is intermittently filling. Do I need to replace the flapper valve? Mm. One second, Derek. Hello, Jeff here. Can I just get you to hold on one second? I want to answer Derek's question that was up on the screen. Cheers. Yeah, thank you. All right, thanks, man. So, Derek, if, you're, if your toilet is intermittently filling, it, you probably need to set your float a little bit further down. Your water prop line is probably so close to perfect that every time somebody walks by the room, that little vibration causes the water to dribble over and then it starts to fill all over again. Okay. So <laughs> I, just give yourself a quarter inch to the top of that fill, fill, fill pipe and you, that'll stop your problem. All right. Sorry, my friend. Uh, who am I speaking with here? Hi, this is Daniel I'm calling in from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Daniel from Pennsylvania. What can we do to help you out today, buddy? I've got two questions for you. First okay. one is a track. Second one's going to be flooring. So, sure. Not on the plumbing. That's all right. Hit me, buddy. To set the scene, we did a kitchen remodel where we took down a large wall and a half wall. Okay. Now, both of those walls had returns in them. Okay. We now only have one return. We used to have three returns in the kitchen. Yes. Down below, we're in a bi level. Okay. So, the bottom of the second spoon. Lower story is a slab. Yep. Down below, we have a pellet stove, which heats our house in the winter. Sure. However, our bedroom is on the far side of the home and doesn't get very warm that, in the winter as a result. That makes sense. I've got all the plumbing overhead in my lower level here where I'm thinking if I could just put a return vent right in front of the pellet stove on the ceiling. I'd be able to suck that hot air and spread it throughout my house in the winter. Okay. Do I need an HVAC guy to come in and run a survey on how much pressure I have in my system to see how big of a hole I can cut in my return? Or am I good to just cut a hole wherever I want? <laughs> well, the, the return is passive. So if you wanted to create a system like yourself where you could turn that, re that return into an uh, air supply, then you're, you're well within your power to do that. You're just going to want to have some sort of a damper system or maybe put in like a, a, a duct fan, something that's actually going to draw the air, right? And force that air down that system. Yeah. It, it would go in the ceiling above where all the heat does fit because my pellet stove on the... Yeah. You know, it's difficult to answer a question like this without having pictures and a diagram. But... Um, having said that, you know, consider consider a membership program because then you can jump in our forum, and then we can actually have some back and forth, and uh, and I can get you a better answer. Gotcha. All right, okay. all right, now, buddy. Flooring Second question flooring question. Also, Hit me. Yeah, that's also on the lower level. Like I said, we're on a flat. Yep. I got carpet on a third of it. 
I've got linoleum on the rest of it, but I've got a laundry room, a bathroom, and two closets. Mm -hmm. I'm running into issues finding a transition strip. I'm going to be putting in um, vinyl based vinyl plank flooring. Yep. And a lot of the transition strips that I have aren't going. Aren't, I haven't found a solution that's going to go from the linoleum up to the vinyl plank that works if you're on a slab. Okay. Because everything I found has a metal C channel that's Kind of idea on a recommendation for the transitions? Um, oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, I'm kind of surprised because usually the flooring manufacturer will have uh, their own, you know, reducers, which is what we call it, to go from one height to another. And then it'll, it'll meet up with your new flooring. So if you're finding transition strips that don't match your flooring, then your flooring is just too thin. Oh, the only one that's really on the market that's readily available is going to be a metal band. It's like a flat band and it has holes for screws and you can pre-drill and, and put the, the, the plugs in the concrete and then you can put your, your screws in. But they're not as attractive as something that snaps into your U-channel, right? Yeah. The other thing you can do is I you can... U-channel upstairs. Yeah. The, the other thing you can do is you can install the, um, your reducer without the U-channel and that'll maybe make it fit. Does that make any sense? And you can install it with PL premium construction adhesive. And so you throw a bead of adhesive down and you set the, the, the reducer on top of it. And you just take some old cans of paint or, or, or gym weights, set it on top overnight and let it all dry in place. Gotcha. All right. Yeah, that seems like it would be a good solution. That well. gives you that extra eighth of an inch that maybe right now is causing you issues. Right. All right. Cool. All right, Daniel. Well, thanks for the call, buddy. Absolutely. All right. Have a good night. Cheers. Well, there we go. Oh, let's see how this is rolling. <laughs> oh, Dragon Rider is heading out for dinner. All right. Well, cheers, buddy. <laughs> we got a call from Alberta. Hello, Jeff here. Who am I speaking with? Hey, Jeff. It's Kevin here. Kevin. Nice to talk to you, buddy. What can I do to help out? Yeah, likewise. Um, so yeah, your resources have given me at least enough confidence to take on some of the work in finishing my basement. There you go. Yeah. So th thanks for that. Um, and um, my main question here is in the bathroom, I installed uh, an alcove tub. Everything is still pretty raw in there. I've got the plumbing electrical done. Good. I'm wondering if you have any tips or recommendations uh, for somebody who's a total amateur potentially taking on uh, tiling from mm -hmm. the wall, from the tub, you know, the, the tile surround above the tub. Sure. Yeah. I, I got some great tips. Are you ready for this? Go with, I'm ready. go with subway tile. Yeah. Every, everybody's first tile job should be subway tile. Okay. It's forgiving. It's easy to cut. All you need is a grinder with a ceramic blade, right? And you can do just about anything. And, and if you have to buy cheap Home Depot tools to drill holes, it's it's 10 bucks and they're disposable and, and it's fine. It's enough if it's ceramic. Okay. As soon as you move into porcelain um, or, or rectified porcelain and large format tile, the skill level goes through the roof. But a basic subway tile is the easiest way to start. And, and you're like, it's how to break teeth on tiling really is what I'm talking about. Right. So if you're new to it, do that. Because then if you make any mistakes, it's an easy fix. You can break out a tile and replace it. <laughs> if you make a mistake with big tile, it, it's usually a much bigger mistake. Okay. The, the larger, ahead, the, and, larger uh, the tile, the more difficulty it is. It's all, that's just the honest, honest truth. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's great. And, and how about the, the backing behind the tile itself? Do I need to be splurging on some of the more advanced materials or what would you recommend there? All depends on your use. Because, guys, everybody listening to this, how often your shower is used, used is how you determine how much money to put into it. And we're going to do a video coming up soon, how to plan for your bathroom shower. Okay. But here's the deal. If your shower is getting used once or twice a day for five or 10 minutes, then that's what we would call normal use. Okay. Anything over that, it starts to become a lot of use and you want to include waterproofing barriers. And then if you're, if you're getting into like, um, 
it's my therapy, I need a 30 minute steam shower kind of thing, then you wanna get into vapor barrier technology as well in your, in your waterproof system. So you move up to Schluter technology when, you, when you're dealing with a lot of vapor, okay? But if it's just regular use, a couple showers a day in and out, you know, and life is busy, then you can get away with just a, a basic wall board and, and a quick paint job with some roll on membrane. And it's more than sufficient. Perfect. Okay. And this would even be less usage than normal usage. So that sounds great. Really well, appreciate it. Take it easy and just enjoy it then because uh, you can't screw that up. You're going to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, we'll buddy. All, All right. Thanks, Cheers, dude. Bye bye. All right. Now, Matt, um, I saw that you put up a question um, from Mary. Can we bring that back up again? There, she, there it is, because uh, Mary's been a member, I think, since the inception of the channel. <laughs> I want to make sure to take care of that. If I need to shift the toilet and sink drains six inches to get further away from the shower. One second here, bud. I'll be right with you. Um, if I need to move, is that too much of a project tackle? or good for a very determined DIY. Okay, Mary, you live in a, uh, a trailer as well. So here's what I know. Moving something six inches is sometimes tricky because you're running into floor joists, all right? If it's in the joist cavity, then moving it is really simple. You're gonna need to get a permit for that almost anywhere you live. I'm not sure your geography, but if you don't need a permit, it's not tricky. Just maintain slope, okay? And if you have a P-trap, make sure you move the P-trap and add pipe, and you're gonna be just fine. All right. Cheers. Hello, Jeff here. Who am I speaking to? My name is Tom. I'm from Massachusetts. Nice. What can we do to help you out? Uh, we have an old toilet in the basement. Um, the flange is like three or four inches above the, uh, the concrete floor. Okay. Is, th is there a way to... Is there a special toilet or something instead of raising the floor back up again? Mm, yeah, actually, there's a special flange. There is a there's a flange. What you want to do, take a picture of your situation. You go to the local yep. Home Depot down there, okay? And yep. what they're going to do is they're going to show you um, it, it's, it's, it's an interior flange, and it's twist and sealed. So it has a, a pipe on it. It's about six inches long, and then a thick rubber gasket, and it's threaded, and it's tapered. And so you, oh. you can actually cut the old flange off flush, put this in yep. the hole, and then you just twist the flange until you create so much compression that you've got that perfectly sealed. And then you can drill oh, cool. a couple of drills, throw in some Tapcon screws, and you are good to go. Very good. How, how do you cut the uh, cast iron pipe? Um, you can, well, it's cast iron. You can actually buy a reciprocator blade, okay, like a sawzall. You can buy yep. cast iron sawzall blades now. They're on the market for the last few years. And it works really, really well. And so you can buy a oh, six or eight inch blade, get it right flat on your concrete and cut that cast perfect. All right? Very good. All right, I my friend. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. So well, take the picture first before you cut it off. Make sure you get the product. And... <laughs> All right, yeah. my man. Cheers to Massachusetts. All right. Good night. There we go. Plumbing question. Love it. All right. <laughs> okay. We're going to go for a few more minutes here. Uh, it's been a long week because we are getting the church ready to sell. So Matt and I have been working long days and uh, I'm exhausted. So I hope you forgive me for cutting it short. But, you know, um, yeah, we try to go for an hour and change. All right. Uh, here we go. Uh, okay, SL. My toilet makes a hissing sound for a few minutes after each flush and the tank takes a while to fill up. Is this a flapper issue? <laughs> like what is just sits there screaming at you like a mad cat what is that all right um okay <clears throat> probably what's happening is the filling system is spraying the water in, into the tub okay so whenever you got one of these situations the water this is part of the water supply okay and so whatever contraption you've got inside your toilet tank if it's spraying the water in there it, it make that hissing sound and then when the water level rises up it stops spraying and now it's just pushing water into water. So that's why it goes away. So it's probably not the flapper, it's probably your intake system. And if it drives you nuts, um, you can change your toilet or change your guts, okay? Most toilets are two piece and you can take all of the guts from a toilet and switch it over for about 30 bucks. And you can get something modern that's going to be um, effective and not make really weird noises. 
because nobody wants an angry cat when they're in the toilet. All right. Well, <laughs> who'd have thought? All right. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, we'll take a question. We'll take phone calls. Let's see. We've got Sean. Bathroom question. Is it recommended to change out your shower valve when replacing the shower while you're tearing out the wall anyway? Okay, so here's the thing. This shower valve from Moen, um, to the best of my knowledge, has been being installed in bathrooms all over North America since before I was born. You don't have to replace the valve. You might change the water supply lines. You might change the height of the shower. You might order up a new trim kit so you can go from chrome to black or gold. Okay? But the valve itself is just a chunk of brass, and the cartridge inside is guaranteed for life because it's got mowing on it. And so you pull the pin, you change out the, 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 the function of it, and you can get a new cartridge if you need to. But as long as that solid brass thing is still working and it's not dripping and leaking, there's no need to change it, okay? Because you can update the finish look and it's already working. So why would you mess with something that's already working? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But it also is very limited because it's just hot and cold on and off. So if you want to have pressure balancing or thermostatic valve or multifunction, of course you got to upgrade. But for the basics of a shower, a good old fashioned Delta, or a good old fashioned mowing is gonna serve you really well moving forward. And if you don't have to touch it, then you don't have to spend money to upgrade it. Life is good. In my shower at the um, Leesburg property, I just bought a new trim kit because the old one was starting to look really dingy. That's all, just 30 bucks, new trim kit. I got a brand new shower, but it's the same thing that was there before. All right, guys, more videos coming up this week. Thursday, we're gonna show you how to do the cement board in that shower. And then on the weekend, we're moving forward in that project. We're talking about our brand new shower tray system for the floor. That product is amazing. It's from Quick Drain. I love it. Uh, you're going to see that in the video because it, it blew my mind. I've never used it before. And we tried it out because I want to know what's going on in the marketplace. Is it good product, bad product? Get that information to you. And I'm in love. Like, I am I am really in love. Anyway. <laughs> uh if there's no more calls, Matt, I'm going to let you um, let me know here. We got a couple more questions. Preacher Man wants to know, replace your chrome with slightly larger diameter plastic to sink the disposal. Is there a way to join plastic to smaller chrome exit pipe that's still solid? Yeah. Um, no, if it's not compatible, it's not compatible. Like in a lot of things, we have bushings and that sort of thing. But when you're going from chrome to plastic, I don't think there's a way to make things that don't work, don't work. So you're going to have to increase the size of your plastic pipe to match the new metal that you have under your sink. So you can go from inch and a quarter to inch and a half or inch and a half to two inch, whatever you got to do. Update your plastic fittings so that where that connection happens, that joins. Just take out a measuring tape, measure across your threads from one side to the next. You take that information with the picture of it, okay? Go down to your local store and they'll show you how to go backwards because the plastic, you can get a bushing. Like for instance, this, this is a bushing, okay? One side fits inside a two inch pipe and the other side, the hole is smaller and an inch and a half pipe comes out. That's a bushing. That's plumbing technology you need to know. So when you're dealing with your, pl your plastic drain systems, you can adjust and adapt your sizes to meet your fixtures. All right, that's how you get that done. Wow. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. All right, guys, I'm done here. My feet are killing me. <laughs> don't put a garbage disposal on your septic system. All right. Um, we don't even have them up here at all. Uh, it's actually quite taxing on your whole system as a whole. What's easier is you learn how to scrape your dishes into the garbage before you wash the sink darn things off. Anyway, guys, thanks a lot for joining us tonight. Hopefully this is handy. If you found this helpful, share it with your friends. Okay hit that button and share it with them because who else is going to give you an hour uninterrupted of problem solving magic like this? My goodness. I love hanging out and helping you out. This is awesome. Looking forward to the next year. Looking forward to getting back down south. Um, yeah, life is good. Uh, we're loving where we are and we're loving the fact that we're sneaking up on 3 million subscribers. Isn't that crazy? My, my, my. Remember the goal is to get to 10 million. I want to have 10 million people helped before I can wrap this sucker up. 
And even if we get there, we probably won't wrap it up. I'm only 53. I'm going to last forever. Okay. This is just way too much fun. I love making a living, helping you guys. This is just a blast for me. Um, and if you haven't, subscribe to the channel. Okay. Be part of the 10 million. That'd be great. Uh, good night, Mary. Good night, Rana. Good night, everybody else. This has been a lot of fun. We will see you again next week when we're on the road traveling back to Florida. And if you've got more plumbing questions, the best solution is to get in on Roger Wakefield with me. We're going to be Saturday the 7th, 11 central time because he's an actual plumber. I got lots of experience and I'm happy to share what I know, but he always knows a little bit more than I do. <laughs> and that's okay. That's why we like to work with him. And that's like we, why we like to work with other people in the trades because I have a certain amount of experience, but I don't want to limit you to what I know. So we're reaching out and getting other trade professionals in here to help you guys out. Hopefully you appreciate that because I think it's a really great idea to get a professional's advice once in a while, not somebody who's just been through the muck. Love you all. We'll see you again soon. Cheers to next time.